Okay, I'm checking to see if this is working. And um, I'm going to try and see if it's videoing. I can't seem to get my computer to press the button and it has my camera, my video camera on it. So I'm going to um, see if the, ah, uh, yes, it must be working. So I'm going to go ahead and start working on these poppies because I'm going to ditch my computer here and try to do this with our cell phones. So I'm going to turn my camera around so that you can see me, aha, actually painting. So we'll set that up. We're going to, um, I use a drying medium. We're going to do, be doing this poppy. Better look at it here. The background is done on the second fire. And to do that, I completely resisted the um, flower. And then I came back the next day and I used a new technique using silk screen oil. I don't know if you've all used that or not, but this was an experiment with me. I did take two coats of the background and you mix the silk screen oil with your paints and then you paint on the background with that oil. And I'm not sure what is in the silk screen oil, but it is, um, it dries very quickly. And once it's dried, you can go ahead and start painting. Now, this is my palette. And I go ahead and went ahead and put all the colors that I use on this because that's how I normally set up my palette. We're going to be mostly using. Um, yellows, reds, and reds. Normally on the first fire I would use yellow red for my poppy, but since we're doing this kind of a one fire, I'm going to be using rich red or blood red or a dark red value. And as you can see, I'm going to load my brush and I'm not just tickling the paint, I am loading that brush completely with oil because if you don't get all that oil on that brush you're not going to get the paint off onto your porcelain so and i just kind of tap out the excess oils and now i'm going to go back into my rich red and as you see when i'm loading this i'm not just tickling the edge of the paint like this I'm dragging all that paint down, mixing it in the brush, and I'm going to turn the brush over and mix both sides. So, as you can see, this brush has a lot of paint on it. If you do not have paint on that brush, it will not come off on the porcelain. Again, so I'm going to start from the outside edge working towards the middle. Sorry about that. I'm going to stand up here because you can probably get a better view of this. So I'm going to start and I'm going to work towards the middle. Now notice that I'm reloading my brush. I'm not trying to paint this whole thing with one brush stroke. And interesting fa fact for all you new painters, The, the idea is to get the paint on the porcelain. I'm not worried about this being a perfect brush stroke. I just want to get the paint on there. And you see I'm using a lot of paint. I use a drying medium. It has a lot of capaba in it. I'm just... I'm blocking this in like that. 
and I'm just and I'm not worried about my brush strokes I just want to get the paint on the porcelain can see you can see all my brush strokes on here we're not worried about that because what we're worried about is maturing those brush strokes after we've got the paint on so I'm blocking this all in it's all I'm gonna use all the same color like I said normally I would put probably yellow red as the color but um, we're gonna use blood red or rich red today the reason I use a light value to begin with is because we like to have light colors under our dark values. And, and our medium red here is a dark value. So you can see this is sloppy. We, we, we don't care. You see all those brush strokes? And you once I've loaded that brush, See, now look at this. I have painted almost this whole flower and I've not reloaded my brush with medium. So now I'm going to, but I'm not going to saturate it now because I loaded it really well to begin with. And What we're concerned about is getting this paint on is that we don't want large chunks of paint. We want, want it to be very smooth after we get done. So what we're doing to begin with is we are just blocking in the paint. We don't care what it looks like. We don't care about making that perfect stroke what we're concerned about is getting that color on the porcelain. And we're not worried about our lines because you're artists, so you guess what? You do not have to stay inside the lines. All right, now, you can see I've pretty much got that completely covered with paint. So the point of your porcelain is once you've got it completely painted, you're going to come back and mature that paint. So to mature the paint, you're going to very lightly fan over the top of that paint. And I'm just hitting the edges of it. And as you can see, now notice as I do this, that's calming all those brush strokes down. Do you see that? And now there's not big chunks of paint. It's all starting to smooth out. And as you start to move this, if you want to move that paint a little bit, get a little closer with your fanning. And you can move that paint. See how much smoother that's starting to get now? And the one thing about iron rich colors is it's so pretty once it gets to this stage, it gets a kind of satin look to it. All right, now I'm dragging this here. Now I'm also going to come back and clean up my edges. But you can do that with a wipeout tool. You can do that with one of those little spongy things. You know, if you want your edges to be nice and um, crunchy, textured, this is your chance to do that, to clean up those edges and wipe them off. And actually, on this particular type of painting, you don't have to worry about that because, um, well, you're going to put that color over the top of it tomorrow. I shut that, or the next fire. So now I'm just going to come back, and remember we had those petals in here, so I'm going to pull those back. And I'm going to actually change that and put a turn back there. And where else do, oh, we had a turn back here. 
Then we have this petal coming through here. And remember, this has a big flip up here. It comes, this is a petal here and it comes off like this. This one comes up here, comes through here. And this one comes from behind. So I'll give that kind of like that. So I just come in there with my regular wipeout tool and let that, let, let your tools do all of your work for you and you're not gonna have to work at it so hard. Now I could come in here and go ahead and paint that center, but w let's go ahead and um, do some wipeouts. Now, normally when I do wipeouts, I drop down a brush size, but I want these to be big strokes. So I'm gonna use the same size of brush. And what I did was I dipped it in my turp and just wiped off the excess paint and then back into my medium. And now I'm going to start pulling out wipeouts. Very important on the very first fire is to get your highlights. So first fire, what you're concerned about on first fire is highlights, texture if you're painting something that's a scene or animals. That's your first fire and your light values. So highlight here. Oh, one of the other things I was, when I we were fanning over this, I forgot to tell you. How do you know when you fanned it enough, when it's ready for you to pull out highlights? Well, if you'll look at it and hold the piece to the light, it will have kind of a satin look to it. Can you see the satin look on that? It's got, there it is right there with the light shining on it. When it gets to that point, that's when it's ready for you to pull out highlights. And what else happens is the fact that you have not pulled all your pigment out of your painting. By waiting and letting that paint happen. It's the same thing that happens when you're, you mix up your paint, you have it on your palette, the next morning you go to look at it and there's a little oil slick all the way around the outside of that paint. Same thing's happening on your porcelain is that oil is settling to the bottom of on the, on the porcelain and it's pulling all that good paint with it. And that's where you want to get all your good paint. Now, if you pull all that off of there, you've pulled out all your pigment. All right, so I'm going to tip this up a little bit so y'all can see it a little better. Well, maybe. Oh, here we go. All right, now I want another highlight here. And so do you see how this is pretty flat of right now? So let's make some movement in it. In order to make the movement in it, we have to create highlights. So I'm gonna put a little dip in here and create a little movement there. So right there at that edge, I can come along and pull out a highlight right down from there. And that'll start making this petals. Do you see how that started to move immediately? Now on the next fire, I would come along and shade on each side of that. And that would make that stand up and create a little wave in there. Okay, what else do we want? We, the one thing about pretty red paint is that it has nice striations in it and you just kind of... Now notice that I'm just using the corner of my brush. I'm not using the flat side of the brush. And now I'm gonna make this a little turn back hiding right in through here. So I put that in there with my wipeout tool and I'm just gonna clean that out a little bit right like that. And then next fire, we're gonna shade underneath it. So let's pull this petal, this big petal here. All right. And again, what am I doing? I'm just using the corner of my brush. I'm gonna turn this and make this a little, we've got three things copying each other here. So let's get some different movement there we go something else going on there and let's make 
some of this dip down a little bit. So I'm gonna hit it right there. And then once, when I come back and I hit that really strong, I'm just going to knock it, the edge of it down. And let's pull another one here. All right, now I'm back into my medium because I got a lot of paint on my brush. So I'm gonna pull this petal up here and that's the cup. So this petal cups in towards the center. So I'm just taking the edge of it and hitting it. Now you have to remember how that petal falls. So this is a sharp edge this is the edge of that petal, so make sure that's nice and sharp. There we go. And let's take that here, and we want, this has to be, it can't be, um, it has to be straight through here. And right now, do you see how this goes right into each other. So we need to change that somehow so that it doesn't look like it's all one petal. So let's pull that out. So that one kind of looks like he's falling down there. And this one's coming in. All right. Now let's hit this side. And notice as I'm painting this, one side is a lot l lighter in value. The other one is a lot darker. Now, this side is going to be going under this petal here. So I don't wanna wipe this out really strong. I wanna keep that dark through there. Remember, first fire is highlights. Get all your highlights in there on the first fire. All right, now we're going to take and pull this petal down. And down, and down. And that petal flips up right here. So we're just gonna take that and drag the side of that brush like that. So let your brush do the work for you. Don't try to work so hard at this. There we go. And see all this big highlight here? You're, you're going to shade underneath that tomorrow on your next fire. So if you need a stronger, I just come in there with your wipeout tool. Pull that down. Now let's flip that edge down there. Like that. And here. All right. Now this has to be straightened up here because that's the edge of that petal. It can't be that jagged edge there. All right. Okay, so we have those first three petals are done. Oh, actually four. So all we've got is these two that are behind. Now remember, they're gonna be the ones that gets the most shadow we want to make this a turn back here, so I'm just using the corner of my brush and pulling down towards that center. And again, let your brush do the work for you. All right, now what I see here is, do you see this? You have conflict of two values right here. We can't really tell the difference between this petal and this petal. So what are we gonna do about that? One of them has to be darker, or one of them has to be lighter. So, and you need to decide which one's behind and which one's on top. So I want this one to lay on top and flip over. So I'm just gonna come back, pick up some more of my red. That's that medium value red, and maybe pick up a little violet of iron, which is your third value, and hit that right on the edge there and now you've got that falling behind there. And again, there's no movement. Look how straight that petal is there and how boring is that? So let's do something 
to change that. And create a little bit of movement in there. Just something different. Something, something that uh, creates some type of movement. Otherwise, you got a flat red there, and that's boring. Nobody wants to look at just flat red. All right, so now we've got this petal coming on here. I'm going to wipe, clean out my brush just a little bit. I'm just hitting it very lightly in the turpentine. As you can see, it's just catching the edge of it, and then I'm just taking that out, reloading it with paint. Let's hit the rest of this petal here. All right, now we want a strong highlight on this, this petal right here, because you can see this is pretty much gonna be pretty much your focal point here, and I forgot to turn back on this too, so I'm gonna hit that really strong with my brush and, and let that color bleed through there. And you can move it so that it twists and turns. Oh, I kinda of like that, that's kinda of different. So we got some movement here, except for there's a big straight line here, so that's kind of boring. So let's change that. And I'm just there. See how that creates more interest there. All right, now we want to, I forgot I had flipped this up here. So this is also a turn back here. So let's curve it a little bit. So I'm just using the wipeout tool and create some movement there. And there's kind of a highlight here, so let's continue that. And one right there. Okay, now I'm gonna drop down to a brush, smaller brush size because that's a smaller turn back there. And I'm just pulling that petal in, just making kind of a C stroke, and that'll make that petal move. And you can see that strong highlight there. You can leave that there. I kind of like it like that. And then when you wash over it tomorrow, that's gonna catch some paint. And you're gonna have three values going on there. So pull that one on top. Now, normally uh, when you think of the centers of poppies, this is probably all I would do on this, on the first fire for this red. And uh, so then on the next fire, the only thing I'm gonna do is shade. And on the second fire, you're going to shade the shadows and shade the highlights. That way you haven't completely overworked everything. So if you look at the inside of a poppy, it is not black, it is actually purple. So we're going to paint this purple. What I do is on, on this particular piece, what I did was I painted, you can see the center there, is purple. So I painted it purple on the first fire and then I went back on the second fire and I washed it with black. So that's how we're going to do this one. And you, or if, you, if you're a black person, put black in there the first fire. I like to put a darker light, a light value under a dark value, and that gives it more um, life. So I'm gonna paint the center of this first. So we want that to be the lightest value. So I'm gonna use uh, chartreuse. Your, or green, yellow, green, whatever color you use. And I add a little bit of grass green or moss green or chrome green. I like that blue and that green to hold that green value. Okay, so now we're going to just come in here and paint this center. 
if you were doing this at home, you could very easily just not even paint the center on the first fire. You could paint it on the next fire. So I'm just, you see, I've completely covered it. So I want you to see how it's normally going to look. So now I'm going to come back and add black or antique green, which is a brown green and black green. And I'm going to shade that on the bottom side to get that sh shadow. And then in the center, the center, that little button has a shadow in it. So an easy way to do this is just come in with your wipeout tool and pull these little striations out of that center. And then on next fire, remember you're putting your texture in today on first fire. So you put this, and I wouldn't even knock down these wipeouts. I would leave them like this because tomorrow you're going to come in here and wash over the top of these. And when you wash over the top of that, it's going to catch, color is going to catch that highlight. And then you have another value. If it bugs you that they're so strong there, then soften them with your wipeout tool or with your brush. I want to make that strong there. And try not to mix your red and your green together because you're going to get mud. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to paint these centers. And remember I said we're going to paint them purple. So if you're a black person, you can paint yours black. This is your piece, so you can do whatever you want on this. That we're gonna paint. I want you to see. I got my finger in this part here. I want you to see the um, the purple. So we're gonna make purple, and I usually make my own purple. I don't buy it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take equal parts royal blue. So I've got like four parts here, royal blue. And then I'm gonna pick up my favorite ruby. And I don't have as much purp blue ruby in it as I do purple. See, there's probably three to one. There's probably four parts blue and three parts ruby. And we're gonna mix those together. And now we have purple, and it's not gummy, and it's not gritty, and it doesn't roll up on you. See how pretty that is? So you have a nice, if you want it to be a lavender, well then use the same blue. And now instead of ruby, you're going to use your favorite medium value pink, which mine is soft rose. So You're probably going to use a little more pink than you did ruby because it takes a stronger color. See, there's your lavender. And if you want it to be a warmer value, add more ruby, more pink. If you want it cooler, add more blue. And we don't care if it's the same color because it's prettier when it's different values. Okay, so now I'm just gonna use, I'm gonna use probably a number, oh, this is about a four brush. And it's got green in it, so we want to get rid of that. And I'm going to paint this purple. Again, I'm loading that brush on both sides. And we're going to tap that purple in. because these poppies have a dark button, or it's a, actually, a, they have like four circles. And this you do not have to have smooth because we're gonna knock all this out anyway, so. What we want is an irregular edge here, and I'll probably straighten this button right now. It looks like the 
end of that button is cut off. So let's round that out a little bit. Like that. I kind of like that purple on there, so just leave it. If it bugs you, then take it off. All right, now we're going to, that purple is going to come down here. You can put that purple right over that red because it's got red in it, so it's not going to hurt that purple. Make sure you kind of straighten your edges up here. And do you see right there, this part right here, how there's fighting on who's on top, so I'm just going to use my wipeout tool and pull that petal back on top. All right, now we're going to put these seeds in here. And we're just gonna come in there with our wipeout tool and put texture in. Remember, today is texture. And the more you text, harder you beat this, the smaller the holes are. So if you want them big, hit them slow and soft. If you want them small, hit them fast and heavy. And you can even get some into the red so then on the next bar, you come in and you wash over the top of this with black. And that knocks all those highlights down. Okay. It looks kind of crunchy, doesn't it? It will. It's going to it's going to bother you today because all you're seeing today is two values, light and dark. So, all this mess in through here and that's going to get all cleaned up. And y'all know how the leaves are just I paint them chartreuse and moss green and um, first fire, second fire, you do all your shading. So I'll do that very quickly so you can see that so we don't take up a lot of time. So again, I mix those two colors on my brush just like we did the centers. And I've got some red on this paint, but I don't care because we're going to add some of that onto it tomorrow anyway on the next fire. And I'm just pulling it down whoops I lost my phone because I moved it all right pull it through here blocking in color we're gonna put another leaf in here. Now what you want to do is add a little different color to it. So I'm going to add a little brown green and a little blue green to it. So it's not exactly the same color. And I'm going to use my okay that's blocking in the green here and I'm going to use my scroller it's kind of a number two or four I believe it is it's pretty big and I'm going to use turpentine as my medium and I'm gonna use that to paint with because it flows faster and easier so I'm going to put the stem in. And I use it also to paint the, the buds. this but 
back to the the bud. And then I back into the turp to kind of clean that out a little bit. And then I'll use a dry brush to kind of clean up the edges and pull out some texture. Pull out a highlight. string. I use the wipeout tool. Put some texture in here. And highlight that gas to be on first fire. And if you want to put some of those hairs on it, you can pull some of the hairs out on this also. All right, now I'm going to um, Put a highlight on this big leaf. So the stem comes up through here. Put a highlight down the middle. I'm just laying my brush on that highlight and pulling out. Now you can get some movement going in here and create some edges on this. So it's not boring. And now I'm going to just take the edge of my brush and put in a vein line. And then on this fancy one here, let's soften this brush strokes down a little bit. And we want it to be a turn back, so Again, we're just going to come in and pull out the edges on that. Use the edge of my brush to pull that turn back. And most of the time when I'm pulling out highlights, it's just the corner of my brush that I'm using. That's it. I'll clean all this up through here and with my Q-tip or whatever. So I think that's it. I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed it and hope to see you again soon.